Welcome to Confessions of a Stenographer, where we are focusing on all things steno and the legal profession. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your co-host, Kirstie Anderson, an official court reporter from Chicago, Illinois. Today, I will be speaking with the lovely Rochelle Ware, who has been in the business for 42 years. This month, we're celebrating Black History Month, and it's important to showcase our legends in the, this profession. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rochelle Ware. Hi, Rochelle. Are you ready to confess? Yes, I am. All right, let's get started. So, who is Rochelle Ware? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And um, Rochelle Ware is a child of God, uh, someone who loves Jesus Christ. And um, I'm a court reporter. I'm also a pastor's wife. And I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And that's where I was raised also. Alrighty, so 40 years in the industry. So, so how did you get into court? Court? Oh boy, what a story that is. <laughs> okay, well, the way that I got into court reporting, um, I guess in, in high school, I had thoughts of maybe becoming a doctor, maybe becoming an airline stewardess, maybe becoming a dancer like the Rockettes, maybe becoming a model, maybe all these thoughts. And, um, you know, I liked business and I liked, um, I, I guess you could sort of say secretarial type work, but I knew I didn't want to be a secretary because I didn't want anybody telling me what to do and you know, I wanted to make a little more money. So as things turned out in my neighborhood, this was way back in 1974. Um, I was maybe about 14 years old. And so you guys don't have to guess. I'm 61. You don't have to figure out the math. <laughs> I started <laughs> court reporting when I was um, 19 years old and I'm 61 right now. So back then, um, we had a basketball court in our neighborhood and it was a pretty safe place. It was before drive-by shootings and shootings were even popular, but I was in the basketball court just watching the boys play a game. I was 14 and my parents told us not to hang out there, but you know how girls are. Me and my girlfriend, we were just standing there watching the game. And um, lo and behold, we didn't know way across the other side of the court outside of the court on the sidewalk, there was an argument going on. And one guy called the other guy a name and the other guy shot a gun. And when he shot the gun, it sounded like a firecracker. And I said to my friend, oh my goodness, somebody threw a firecracker. Well, it was a bullet. And the bullet went into my left lower leg. And Long story short, we had to go to court and the man who shot the gun took a plea. I had no idea what all these things meant back then. But while I was there, my mother, she said to me as a pioneer, uh, as she was, uh, Rochelle, I think you should think about being one of those people sitting over there, court reporter. And I thought, really? So we saw a court reporter in the courtroom and my mother suggested that and that's how I got into court reporting. So God turned a bad situation into a good situation. Wow, that's an amazing story. I, I, thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. So on to that, I wanted to branch off. Um, as we're celebrating, you know, we're celebrating Black History Month. Now, why should we be celebrating Black History Month and what does that mean for you? Well, Black History Month means a lot to me. And any goal that we set, we have to be motivated. And, uh, you know, not only does Jesus Christ motivate me, but our Black history motivates me and, and my ancestors. Whenever I was in court reporting school, and when I became a court reporter, 
back in 1980, I believe it was 1979, um, to have an African-American female court reporter certified and working in the judicial system in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the Court of Common Pleas, I was the first or at least one of the first. And the females, there, were, there was one African-American male who was before me, but legend has it that they drove him crazy and you know treated him so bad he just quit. Uh, so what motivated me in terms of Black history is I would think about all that we have been through as a people and in court reporting school and becoming a court reporter wasn't just about me. It was about my family and all those before me. One of my greatest motivators is Harriet Tubman and Martin Luther King Jr. and I could go on and on, but Black History Month really means a lot to me because we didn't get to where we are on our own. We're on the shoulders of many others before us. And we must always keep that in mind when we're working in our profession. That is very true. And you speak on motiv being motivated. I know it's definitely hard. It was definitely hard for me trying to stay motivated during school and, and for you to share your experience of how um, the background where you started, how you learned about corporate and then wanted to incorporate that to your own experience is just is just very profound I'm, I'm honored to talk to you today <laughs> um oh, thanks Kirsty. oh thank you I just wanted to um so then I wanted to ask um do you have any moments of our history that took place um during the 42 years that you've been working that you would like to uh, speak on any moments that you'd like to share that you had uh courthouse or in general well what comes to mind right away is I would say he was sort of a mentor to me in the sense of he was a, a judge and an African-American judge. And even back then, there, there weren't many, even up north in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, and just to think about what he went through to get to where he was, and maybe there was a maybe there were two other African-American judges and, um, but him in particular, his name was Livingstone M. Johnson. The way he would say it, Livingstone M. Johnson. <laughs> 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 and, um, oh man, what a man he is. I tell you, I, I, I might have to try to get this podcast to him. But anyway, when I walked in to juvenile court on my very first day as a brand new 19 year old court reporter. And there stood Judge Johnson. And he just looked at me. And he said, dear, it's been a long time coming. And I knew what he meant. And and that was it nothing else needed to be said. And um, so that meant a lot to me because all the hard work that I did to get there and all the hard work you did to get to where you are and um, Shawnice and you know what we've done, it just, it just really warmed my heart that he appreciated that. So that's what I think about when I think about 42 years ago, what stood out at that point in time in history. And then I know it also had to be very um influential especially being 19 and just starting out wow yes 19 years old and right after i started that job um i bought my first house at 19 so the profession has enabled me to do things i bought a brand new car i bought a house at 19 so i give god all the glory honor and praise and anything i say because without him, as you guys know, we can do nothing. Absolutely. That's beautiful. 19 and a homeowner. I think actually it's now time. We're going to take a short commercial break. Hi, this is Terry with Legal Grins. Are you looking for the perfect shirt that shouts your love for court reporting? Legal Grins. Or a lapel pin that demonstrates to the client that you are certified, licensed, 
and a stellar professional, Legal Grins. How about a snarky mug that gets the message across, either in Steno or English? Legal Grins. Cool prints for the legal peeps is what you'll find when you visit Legal Grins in either Etsy or at www.legalgrins.com. Okay, and we're back. Okay, uh, Rosha, I wanted to ask you, let's talk about a little about certifications. Um, so how was your testing process back in your day? Okay, well, back in the dinosaur days, <laughs> <laughs> um, NCRA was still around and I joined. So I've been a member of NCRA for a long time. That's the National Court Reporters Association, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. And um, the RPR exam, pretty much the same, except for I had to transcribe it on a manual typewriter. And I had to use that little eraser with the brush on the end and (laughs) fix my corrections. (laughs) And I had to look in a hard copy dictionary to check my spellings. Uh And so... um, you know, it was more challenging, I would say, in that regard. And um, then when I took the RMR, the merit test, um, I was working for federal court back in 1991. And that test back then, we had to pass all three legs at one time. We could not take Um, the literary jury charge come back for the Q&A. It had to all be passed in one day in the same day. Oh, wow. And so um, that's how it was. And I had to take the written knowledge test. And I think there might have been a process where you could take the written knowledge test separately. But I know the skills test had to be all together. And I'll tell you what, after that day in downtown Pittsburgh, when I left that test, I was worn out. I was just <laughs> out of it. My brain was fried. You hear me? <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, that, that's how the testing was back in the day. I, I commend you because I, you know, I have heard about that during during my time. We can pass it in legs, even in my state for my state test. Um and it's just I can't imagine trying to pass it in one leg it's just hard for me I'm not a good test taker so I just really commend commend you and all the those who had to take it like that man Mm -hmm. thank you so what certification is most important to you I heard you say that you're um RMR and then that you worked federal um which certification is the most uh important to you well you know what I think that all certifications are important and you know, it just opens up the job market for you, gives you more options. And so definitely go for your RPR, RMR, CRR, and we'll talk about the new one I have created. And, you know, just get certified because it, it gives more credence to the skill that you have. And my mother just told me, since we're talking about Black History Month, Um, She was a pioneer in and of herself because she sacrificed her career to raise us. And she didn't go back. She didn't go to college until she was in her 40s. And she went to college and she became a math and science teacher. And that's really phenomenal for an African-American woman to be a math and science teacher. Um, It's just really amazing to me. But anyway, she's passed away now. And um, I give her a lot of credit for the woman I am today. But, um, you know, certification, what, what she told me is you have to knock down every excuse they have. And what she meant is, I mean, just quite honestly, being African-American, things can be tough sometimes when you interview. The competition is even greater because you're not only competing with your peers and and, and other people in your profession, but you're competing against racism um, in, cer- in certain situations. And I certainly faced it myself. So my mother taught me, Rochelle, you have to go above and beyond. And if you want to get certain jobs, you have to be certified because that takes away 
some of the excuses they might put up in front of you. And you should be able to say, I'm not only qualified and skilled, but I'm certified. So that's why certifications are important to me, but they should be important to all court reporters because it just makes you more marketable and puts yet another tool in your toolbox. Not only qualified and skilled, but certified. I'm going to keep that and write that down because that I definitely need that as a reminder because it's hard for me. I just, I'm not good at testing. I can do my job, but I definitely want more certs. It's just, I'm not a good test taker. <laughs> um, oh. And to hear how you're, um, how you have overcame and how you have become an RMR. That's a goal of mine and to get to R- get the RPR. Uh, I just, I thank you for sharing that, um, that info and then um, for encouraging me, in- encouraging me. Little did you know you encouraged me in that part. <laughs> um, well, you're, you're welcome. And you know what, Kirstie, you can do it. If I can do it, you. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so then after, so you got certified. So your first job, um, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. Did you say you were an official or were you freelance? Well, actually, the way it went is I went straight into court as an official. And um, what happened was, I forget what month I graduated in. I think it might have been May. And um, they gave me a test at the courthouse. I never, I I didn't start out as a freelance court reporter. I just skipped that whole uh, situation. And... um, you know, what I did, I thank God for the wisdom he gave me and how my mother taught me. When I was in school, I would go to the courthouse and I would sit in the courtroom and I would watch the court proceedings just on my own. I would just do that after school. And I got to know a particular judge and he was a Caucasian judge. You know, that's why we have to love all people because uh, people who are not African-American have helped us all through the years and even in my own experience. And I would Mm -hmm. go sit in his courtroom. His name was Judge Ridge. And I got to know him and his staff. And so when it came time to graduate, I just sent in a letter and I asked him, could I use him as a reference? And I asked human resources to consider me for their next opening. And um, they did. So anyway, when when I got a call, they wanted to test me because the NCRA test, as you know, is not given until November. Back back then, it was given twice a year. It was given, I think, in May and in November. Well, when I graduated right then, I, I, I couldn't take the test right at that point. So they tested me right in the courthouse and in the court reporter's office. And guess what, guys? I typed on that manual typewriter and I missed the test by one mistake. Oh, I hate that. (laughs) One mistake. And they were like, well, you're so close. And I I think they really did want to hire an African-American court reporter, too. And so not that we use that as an excuse, but it it is good to have diversity. So anyway, Mm -hmm. they said, since you were so close, we're going to hire you. And they were thinking about putting me in this assignment called the I don't know, it was some yucky assignment. I forget what it's called right now. But after they <laughs> talked about and everything, they said, no, we're going to put her in juvenile court like we normally do where we start people out. And um, so they said, but what you have to do is when November comes, you have to take the test with NCRA and you have to pass it. Or, you know, we want you to pass it. So I said, okay. Well, I did. When the test came around in November, I took it and passed it. Thank God. And yeah. um, so I, Hey, so my my first job was as an official court reporter with the Allegheny County Court of Common Pleas in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Well, Rosha, I didn't realize we were more alike than um, we were more alike. I actually, my first, I I became an official court reporter first instead of freelance. I wanted to be a freelancer, but I became an official first. So, um, so then after being, have you always been an official or did you... um, did you also work anywhere else? Well, um, I actually, after I was an official for, I guess, almost 12 years, I started my own freelance company. I had a freelance agency for about 10 years in Pittsburgh, PA. 
And um, I held that freelance agency at the same time that I worked at federal court in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, so it was a pretty busy time. So yes, I have been a freelance agency owner. I have done freelance work in terms of every aspect of freelance court reporting from depositions to meetings to conventions. And since it's Black History Month, I'll mention that I had been, at, I was asked to cover a Jack and Jill convention, which was pretty challenging. Jack and Jill is, it's like a social, uh, I don't know, group where teenagers are trained to become productive adults. It's an African-American organization. And it's, it's, it was something to see. I didn't even know what it was, but Jack and Jill, I covered one of their conventions and I covered uh, the AKA convention. And I was specifically asked to cover those things because I was African-American. So um, since it's Black History Month, I mentioned that. And uh, so, yes, I have done uh, freelance work, freelance agency work, official court reporter work. And um, yes, all areas, criminal, civil, juvenile, family, orphans court. I mean, you know, I've just heard so many things over the years and covered so many different venues. So what would you say is your favorite um, official freelance criminal? Believe it or not, this is going to shock you guys because it's, it's just the opposite of my whole personality. My favorite is covering murder trials. Can you believe that? <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> uh, murder trials, but even more than that, I used to do these uh, coroner inquest hearings and I love them because they lasted for maybe one or two hours when I had the freelance agency. And it had the murder homicide aspect to it, but it wasn't long. You know, when you do the murder trials in court, you have the jury selection and all the testimony and oh my goodness. But <laughs> yeah, the coroner cases, I, I really like those a lot. That That is my favorite for whatever reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I, I know the same. I feel the same way. I don't know why. I just, it's something about the murder or the murder trials. I just really like them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um so then I wanted to ask you, you are now the founder of an academy of experts in court reporting. Can you share that share the details about that? Yes, thank you for asking. That is brand new. And it's something I believe the Lord gave me and it came out of my, how can I say it? My attempts to pass the CRR, the Certified Real-Time Reporter exam. And I'm a speed writer, you know, I have the RMR. So to go back and be a CRR and, and slow down is difficult for me because when I hear ready begin, I'm going out the gate. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I have to slow down. And when I'm in court, because I'm required to write real time sometimes, and I can write clean and I cleaned out my dictionary, you know, all that stuff you have to do. Um, but the CRR, it just, it just eludes me. I just, I haven't been able to pass it yet. So I said, well, you know what? Um, there are some federal courts and even state court, because I worked for state court in Delaware. By the way, guys, I've worked in Pittsburgh, Delaware, North Carolina, and now Puerto Rico. So, oh, wow. um, you know, when I worked in Delaware, I was, my title was official real-time court reporter. And so I had to provide real time every day to the judge, you know, no complaint. And I do it here sometimes, but that test is like, ah. So I said, <laughs> there's gotta be something in between, something in between the RPR and the RMR and the CRR, because there's a lot of court reporters that fall in the gap who are on their way to the CRR, which yes, we all should get, but some of the courts say, okay, as long as you're real-time capable and you can set up the technical side of it and provide that stream and we can read it, we'll hire you. And um, some say, we want you to get the CRR eventually. And some just say, we want you to be able to write it. You won't get that pay with federal court. You won't get the higher real-time pay, but they will hire you um, 
to do it. So that's where the Academy of Experts in Court Reporting came in, just brand new. I believe the Lord gave it to me because what this certification will, will demonstrate is that you are able to set up your equipment. You know how to make it stream to the judge, to the attorneys. And when it streams to them, they'll be able to read it. They're not going to see a lot of steno and a lot of untranslates, uh, different mistakes and unreadable material. So the CRC, I mean, the, um, the C, the uh, R, where did I put my note at? It is the um, certified, I, I, I have to find my, my it's, it's so brand new that um, it's the, the certified um, real-time capable reporter. Um, the RCR, the real-time capable reporter, RCR. And what that shows is that you are capable of providing real-time translation and it's readable. So if you apply at a federal court or if you apply at a state court and they say, hmm, well, you know, we want you to be able to do real time, are you able to do it? Well, yes, I'm certified as real time capable. And uh, while I'm working on my R, I mean my CRR, I am able to set the equipment up stream to you and you'll be able to read it. So um, like I said, there's some court systems that will hire you and I just figured it would be nice for the court reporters to learn how to set up their equipment, how to stream to the judge over the internet or you know, however they get it to the attorneys to demonstrate competence in that area and also um, have it be readable. And there's a lot of court reporters that fall in the crack there where they don't know how to kind of get the technical part going. And um, then they, they can write the real time on their depositions and for the judge and different things, but they just don't have the CRR yet. So that is what that is. It is the um, RCR, Real-Time Capable Reporter. And um, the reason I call it the Academy of Experts in Court Reporting is because I would not only like to certify court reporters that are in that little gap right there, but also eventually certify scopists and proofreaders. Um, so lastly on that subject, in addition to that, I do also offer consulting and coaching services for you know, a reasonable rate and just to help people, to help other court reporters of all ages and backgrounds and ethnicities. And, um, you know, so if, if you're interested in learning more about the RCR or coaching or consulting or something, you know, just shoot me an email and um, the email will be included, I'm sure, in some of the materials, but it is rmmsloan at hotmail.com. And I'd be happy to help in any way I can. So that was long, but it's because it's new and I'm just passionate about it. And I just want court reporters to, um, you know, level up and, and keep moving up. And I just think that this is a great way to help not only myself, but also help others. No, no, you're fine. The more detail, the better. I'm happy that you explained all of that. And it's great that you're trying to find a way to bridge that gap and have more opportunities for us out there, which is definitely good because, like you said, some people don't know how to set up the real time. So it's nice that you're trying to include everybody and create more opportunities for us. Um, yes. There's one thing I want, I want to take a step back. I know you said that you um, reported in Pittsburgh, Delaware, and Puerto Rico. So what is it like to report over in Puerto Rico? Uh, yes, that was uh, Pittsburgh, Delaware, North Carolina, and Puerto Rico. Um, but oh, yeah, so to, oh, no, you're fine. You're, you're just totally, totally fine. Thank you so, so, so much. And um, congratulate you on what you've accomplished as well. So I always say oh, it's not you. just all about me, even though it is the interview of me, but <laughs> you know, you, you're fantastic. Okay, so to work over here in Puerto Rico, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I'll say it's very interesting. <laughs> and uh, it's federal court. I must say, if it wasn't federal court, I wouldn't be here because um, you know, it provides the stability 
and uh, you know, the income needed to make this all happen. So I'm thankful because my supervisor is wonderful. And um, also my coworkers, you know, we all get along. And although no, no place is perfect, we all know that. But I've worked in a lot of different places and different cities. And I must say, this is the best so far. And it, a lot of it, I believe, has to do with the morale and the professional atmosphere and, you know, just the teamwork. And since we're in Puerto Rico, and I, I've learned a lot because trust me, I knew nothing about Puerto Rico. When I say nothing, I mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I am learning. I've even learned a, a few words uh, since I've been here. I'm picking up on the language a little bit. But because we're near the ocean um, and we're in the Caribbean, we're a Caribbean island. Uh, there's a lot of drug cases that come through here for federal court because they're, they're coming from different other Caribbean locations or other places across the ocean. And they come to Puerto Rico on their way to the mainland US. And so we do a lot of drug cases, big time drug cases. And there's, um, there's civil cases too uh, as well, but that's, that's what it's pretty much like to work here. I enjoy it. We're able to, well, even before COVID hit, we were able to work from home when we weren't needed in court, which is nice. And, um, you know, I hope that answered your question, what it's like to work here. But I, I enjoy working here. I get homesick sometimes, but um, it's a, in terms of a work environment, it's, it's the best job I've ever had so far. You did answer it. Um, I... I love that you said it's federal. That that's like a dream of mine. One day I hope to hope to be federal. We'll see. <laughs> but I love you that you said it. that. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's definitely an interest of mine. And to hear that you're doing it over there and to hear the cases you have. Wow. Um does it ever feel though like you're on a nice vacation? It's warm, like it's not cold. It does it ever get cold over there or no, it no. doesn't. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> when I was looking at the um, condo where I rent at, and I, I asked, I said, well, where's the furnace? What, what happens when it gets cold? And they said, oh, you don't need a furnace. It doesn't get cold. You don't need a heater. And I thought, wow. really? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's different. Pittsburgh, <laughs> that's different, right? And coming from Pittsburgh, PA, and all that snow for all those years, and oh my goodness. So no, it sometimes it does feel like a vacation when I when I'm reporting here. And like I said, you know, I give God all the glory and nothing's perfect. You know, everything has challenges. But I'm looking out of the window and there's a swimming pool that I can see and we could all actually go swimming right now if we wanted to. <laughs> oh, sounds amazing. I'm in Chicago and right now it's very cold and snowy. So <laughs> uh, it's fine. Well, believe it or not, sometimes it gets so hot and it's hot. And I thought, I told my husband the other day, I said, well, you know what? I think I'd like to feel a little bit of cool air. <laughs> I'm saying that, but sometimes it gets so hot. But um, yeah, so then whenever I go to Walmart, which as far as I'm concerned, if there's a Walmart in town, I'm, I'm, it makes me feel like home, you know? So sometimes I'll go to Walmart or to the mall and over here, it's, it's, a, it's, um, you, you would feel at home. It's not, some people think it's like a third world country or something strange, but it, it's really not. Any store that you have in Chicago, you can find it here pretty much. And um, if I go to the mall, but this is before COVID, and there's palm trees and funny uh, roosters running around <laughs> and iguana crawling across the street, you know. <laughs> I'm good on the iguanas. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll think, yeah, uh, Dorothy, you're not in Kansas anymore. But <laughs> yeah, so sometimes when I look at the palm trees, even doing regular errands, I feel like I'm on a little vacation or before COVID hit and I'd be working at the courthouse in old San Juan where the cruise ships would dock and at lunchtime I'd walk and the tourists tourists would be out there and 
So definitely, yeah, there's there's times when I feel like I'm on vacation, but then there's other times when, you know, I'm working or uh, doing my errands. I don't feel like I'm on vacation, but <laughs> the palm the palm trees, that's what makes me feel like I'm on vacation every day. And how long have you been over there? Well, I've been here, it'll be two years in April. And um, that that's how long I've been here. It, it went pretty fast. So I'm sort of getting getting used to it. Well, at least you're at least you're enjoying it and taking in all the sun and then enjoying your assi- and enjoying your assignment as well. That's that's the thing, you know. As long as you're enjoying that, enjoying that too. <laughs> but yes. um, actually, let's just take a, a commercial break real quick. Just stay tuned, everybody. Hi, Terry. Welcome to the podcast today. So tell me, what is Legal Grins? What kind of business is it? Hi, Shawnees. I'm really glad to be here, and I love your podcast. It is so fresh and outside the box. Legal Grins was formed in the summer of 2017 by a stenographer, me, of nearly 30 years. It was born out of a desire to provide entertaining and engaging merchandise for the legal community, specifically court reporters. Many of us wanted to wear and display our love for this legal career that has taken such good care of us. So with a combination of rudimentary graphic design knowledge and a quirky sense of humor, Legal Grins was created. Oh my God, that sounds fun. What kind of products do you sell to escort reporters? If you want a mug that has something sarcastic and steno, we've got it. If you want the attorney client to know you are certified and a polished professional, we've got the certified stenographic reporter lapel pin for that. T-shirts, stickers, mugs, lapel pins, hats, and much more. I am so glad we had a chance to talk and I'll be running on over to your shop now. Wait, how do I find you? Well, you can find Legal Grins in Etsy. Just search for Legal Grins in the Etsy search box. And we also have our own website at www.legalgrins.com. That's awesome. Thanks so much for being here today, Terry, and for sharing about Legal Grins. You are so welcome, Shawnees. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. All right, we are back. Um, R- Rochelle, I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, do you ever think about coming back either to Delaware, Pittsburgh? Did you, um, North Carolina? Uh, do you mean in terms of once I retire or do you mean to do uh, court court um, Yes, when you retire, yes. Oh, okay. Well, when I retire, yes, I'm definitely going to move back to North Carolina, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, unless the Lord has otherwise, but that, that's my plan. I'm going to retire in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, hopefully you'll have some of the warm weather that you're, that you have over there. You'll bring it back to us. <laughs> yeah, it'll, you know what? I just know that once I leave, it, it's kind of like when, when you come to Puerto Rico and it's an island and you just fall in love with the island and the people. And because it's African, I mean, uh, Black History Month, you know, the, over here, there's so many different shades of Puerto Ricans. I mean, I, I, I've learned so much. There, there are some that, you know, are really, really light complected. They, they look Caucasian. Then there's other ones who are just really, really dark complected and all in between. And it's beautiful. And so... I know that when I retire and leave, I'm going to miss the island. I'm going to miss the people. You just kind of fall in love with the island and the people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And some people talk about crime and and everything, but there's crime everywhere. You just have to be careful and know where to go and not, you know, where not to go, especially at night. And it's 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 not how it's made out to be over here sometimes. And um, yeah, but the weather, bringing it back to the States, I think I might bring a little <laughs> bit with me. But my, my one friend who's a federal, she's a, a federal official in D.C., and she would tease me because she said, Michelle, you came here from Pittsburgh and you brought all this snow to Delaware. <laughs> and then you went to North Carolina, you brought all the snow to North Carolina. And because, you know, they normally don't get a lot of snow, but they did when I came there. 
<laughs> and uh, so I said, Liz, the other day, I said, well, I haven't been able to bring snow to Puerto Rico yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just, um, I know that I'll miss it and the weather will never be exactly like it is here. And I, I talked to my husband. I said, do you think you'd like to buy a little condo here and we could come and in the winter months, just come here or once we're retired or rent it out Airbnb. And we just looked at each other and said, no, because when it's, when we're comfortable and cold, we're not going anywhere. We're not going to the airport. We're staying in the house. <laughs> no, so <laughs> I understand that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I hope to bring some of the weather back with me. We'll see. I, I really would love to bring some kind of a plant or something, you know, <laughs> a native plant from Puerto Rico just to bring with me when I retire. We'll see. I am love that you're enjoying the experience out there and, and working out there. Um, oh, I didn't get a chance to ask you. Okay. So let's talk about software. Um, you know, your software, you know, our software is very important. Do you have any tips that work for you? What software are you on or? Okay. Well, I have case catalyst software and, um, you know, it's, it's worked very well for me because I used to have Xscribe software for the older reporters. You'll remember that. Um, and I've always been with Stenograph for my whole career. And so I just know the software pretty well. I mean, I'm sure there's much more I can learn, but I feel very comfortable with it. And, um, you know, one thing I like about it in terms of any special tips or different tricks I've learned, I love the real team feature. And I don't know if you, if you have case catalyst, but I was I one do. of the, I love it. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was one of the reporters who initially recommended to Cinegraph, Hey, we need some kind of real time, real team thing going on because I actually had a feature like that back in the nineties on the other software. And I thought we really need this anyway. So I'm sure others, suggested it and they developed the technology and I really really like that and you know what a tip or a trick I've learned is I can have two real team screens open at the same time with two different uh, reporters or two different scopists or uh, I don't know if you realize you could do that or not on two different um you know, you have two different ones going at the same time. You could, you could even have. I didn't two know that. Uh huh. You could even have two different laptops going at the same time with real team. You just have to log in with two different emails, and it's permitted. It's no kind of um, sneaky trick that Stenograph doesn't <laughs> permit. Because one time I had my laptop open at the courthouse, and I left it open, and then I came home. And I started real team and I was able to connect the two different laptops for me as if I was a Scopus and a court reporter, I connected to myself. You can also do that. You can, you can connect to yourself from two different locations. So that was pretty cool. So would you say that's your, um, your favorite tip or like, what's your favorite um, gadget that you like to use either software or just in general? Uh, gadget, well, sorry. Hmm, favorite gadget? Oh, I don't know. I, I think for me, it's just the technology. So you know what? With Case Catalyst, they have the um, uh, wireless real time, you know, where you can connect without the cord and that little dongle you stick in there and you can have the wireless real time going. I love that. I would say that's my favorite gadget. Awesome. So then, um, so then was now with scoping, do you use a scopus or do you prefer to scope your own work? Well, you know what? Um, right now, believe it or not, because of the judge I'm with, I don't have a lot of transcripts to do. But if I did, I would use a scopus. For my entire career, I've always used a typist. Back in the day, we had to use a typist. We actually dictated our work. And it would be on a reel-to-reel -reel little tape. And we would give our typist the little reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape. And she would stick it in her transcriber. And she would type it up 
from a manual typewriter with carbon paper and everything, ladies. I'm telling you, it was a serious operation. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I've always used a typist or a scopist, proofreader. You know, I, I can do it myself. And sometimes I do on little jobs. But I think that's what preserved me over the years because my fingers, I didn't overwork my fingers with writing on the machine, scope all of my work, put in all of my correct, you know, it just, the, the scopus took a lot of pressure off of me and it gave me a life. I was able to have some free time and I was also able to preserve my fingers. So I, pres I prefer using a scopus and a proofreader when I'm, I'm busy, you can get more pages done. And some people think, oh, do it yourself, keep all the money, but you know what? You pay in other ways and you really don't get to keep all the money because you have to pay more taxes. And whenever you pay a scope and a proofreader, you can write that off on your taxes. So that's, that's what I prefer. This is very too, true. And as I'm learning, you know, it, nothing is better than having more me time and self-care and more sleep. So <laughs> I definitely get it. <laughs> yes, we do need our rest and we have to take care of ourselves. So important. I have seen a lot of court reporters over the years just not take that time out to rest or overdo it or go after all the money and you know, they wind up getting sick and some have even died. And so, oh yeah, we have to take care of ourselves. I'm definitely guilty of pushing myself to the limits. I'm trying not to. I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> yes, um, you'll, you will. You'll learn. So now let's look back over your whole career. Um, what's something you're most proud of or were you, what's something that you're so happy you got to do? Uh, well, I'd say looking over my whole career, what I've come to understand is that my job is not just a job. Um, it is actually a mission. You know, the Lord has me on a mission, not only to do a job, but everywhere I've worked, he's used me to help somebody. He's used me to encourage others. Um, I've learned, people have encouraged me. So looking back, I think that um, I'm proud of the fact that the Lord has used me to represent him and also our, our people. When I say our people, I mean African-American people because there have been times when I've sat in the courtroom and I've seen, let's say maybe an African-American defendant and maybe he and I, we were the only two African-Americans in the room and I think that encouraged him. Or I might have seen a young girl. She could have been of any um, ethnicity or, you know, the little African-American girl looking at me and I'm praying silently to myself for her and, you know, her thinking, oh, wow, you know, I can do this. Or so I think that makes me proud. I, I've had, um, say, a janitor or a cleaning lady. I have a heart for janitors and cleaning ladies because my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, she was a cleaning lady for the public school system. And one of them said to me, wow, I'm so proud of you for being here. There, there's no, there's, there's not been any African-American reporters here or, you know, and, and it encouraged her or, or a male janitor. I, I don't know. It just, it makes me proud to know that I have encouraged and helped others and just serve, you know, we're, we're servants. We're at work to help people resolve disputes and, um, you know, help others. So that, that's what makes me proud, I would say. Also, I represent um, the Lord Jesus Christ. I represent my family. Um, I represent our heritage. So it just, it just makes me proud to know that I played a role in those kind of ways. I love just everything you said that just all of that right there, your representation, how, how you want to be an example, how you pray for others. I just, uh, that just touched my heart. Oh, um, thank you. So what's one thing you wish you had learned at the start of your career? Well, like you guys are saying at the start of my career, um, I wish I would have 
known and learned how to pace myself better. I'm actually the first person in my family to have gone to college. And um, my mother taught me so much, but she couldn't tell me really how to pace myself in terms of not overdoing it like like you were saying and and how to know when to take a break and um you know even in court when i was young oh my goodness there was one time i worked in in court till midnight oh my god and it was that it was a juvenile court and the judge looked over and he said are you okay and me being a young court reporter mm-hmm, i'm fine no that was not the truth <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying. You know, so what I wish I would have learned is to speak up and say, you know what, I'm really dying over here and I need a dinner break and I need some juice or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so we're human. We're we're not machines. So I've I've come to learn that we're not perfect. And now Every I don't wherever I'm at, if I'm in federal court, state court, wherever I'm at, when it comes to be an hour and a half, I'm thinking, okay, now somebody needs to realize I need a break. <laughs> and then when it gets to be an hour, uh, going on two hours, if no one has asked for a break, I speak up. Excuse me, Your Honor. You know, in this respectful way, at the right time, you don't have to do it right in the middle of somebody's sentence. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, <laughs> so yes. At the, at the next convenient time, excuse me, Your Honor. And if you sound real pitiful, it really helps, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, excuse me, Your Honor. May I please have a 10 minute break? And I found out they go for that better than if you say, excuse me, Your Honor, may I have a 15 minute break? They don't like that one. You know, 10 minutes works better. And um, so I just learned to just speak up, let my needs be known because we're quiet. They think we're furniture and you just have to (laughs) be honest and you have to speak up in a respectful way. And when whenever the judge gives you a break or the attorneys, if you're on a deposition, and it's 10 minutes, be back on time. And then when you have to ask again, they'll they'll give it to you again. If you're late and they can't find you and, you know, you might not uh, get that break right when you want it. But yeah, that, that's mm-hmm. what I wish that I, I would have spoken up in different instances and and knew that I could speak up and I had a right to let my needs be known as well. So then along with what you just uh, stated, what message do you have for new professionals that are starting out? Yeah, so of course that, all that I just said. And um, new professionals just starting out, I would say be a professional. Yes, represent your profession well. Um, Like I said, represent your family well. Just represent your whole ancestry well, whether you're African-American, Caucasian, or Puerto Rican or Hawaii, wherever you, wherever you come from, just be professional, uh, represent well, and be kind to yourself, you know, focus on your, your health, your physical health, your mental health, and, you know, try to get that balance where you have a a work-life balance, that well-rounded life, and, you know, if you're ever in a situation a work environment and you find that that it's just not healthy for you then pray and really think about should you move on because you only get one life and um you know you just want to make sure you're working somewhere that is healthy for you all the way around and don't don't be afraid to ask for help reach out when you don't know the answer and you know, just, just those kind of things. So know that you can do it. Uh, new professionals starting out, I would say start saving. Have a plan for when you get to be my age um, and older. And if you start saving young, learn how to invest in the stock market. Mm-hmm. Learn how to put some aside for saving. And of course, I'm a Christian, so give your tithe. I had to throw that in there, of course. <laughs> and um you know, you just, you want to be financially smart. You want to think as a business person, 
you know, sometimes we can just be nice and try to please everybody and, you know, but put some money aside, a percentage of your income. Um, it'd be good if you could save 10% of your income, put it aside for your retirement. And um, I, I think that's the advice I'd give new professionals starting out. Yes, with you saying balance, I cannot emphasize that enough. I'm still working on it. No matter what stage you are in life, it feels like you may have to um, find a new way to find balance. Like with the pandemic, everything I knew I had to change in a sense. So yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely understand balance. <laughs> yes, yes. So I talked about it earlier. Um, you mentioned how you want to, when you retire, you want to go back to North Carolina. So what, what are your retirement plans besides just moving there? Well, um, you know, before I answer that directly, I will say that I am ready to retire. I was ready to retire yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you have to wait until the timing is right. And the Lord says it's time. And um, so my retirement plans would be, of course, to go back to North Carolina and um, also continue my efforts with the RCR examination and different certifications. And I'll always, God willing, be doing something connected to court reporting. I might proofread, um, you know, write a book, do Zoom seminars. Um, you know, we have a small little church. So, of course, I'll be busy working in the ministry and, um, you know, living a full life. But you know what? When I think of retirement, I don't think of it as sitting in a in an easy chair and not doing anything all day. Um, the thing that's attractive to me and that I look forward to is being able to pretty much set my own schedule. Because if you think about it, I've been a reporter longer than I've been alive. And, you know, the majority of my life has been regimented, disciplined from a very young age um you know court starts at this time all rise you know lunch break come back and so i just look forward to having the ability to for the most part set my own schedule so those are some of my retirement plans just enjoy life and i'm thankful to be alive you know you're alive i'm alive this pandemic's going on and uh, i just trust god to make it to retirement and to enjoy it. So then what is currently next for you while you're still working? Now you said you wanted to retire soon. What do you plan on doing currently still um, during the pandemic while you're still um, working in Puerto Rico? Well, um, you know, I would like to still just become better because we can all still grow. We can all still learn. I can learn from you. You can learn from me. We can learn from each other um, on Facebook. I do have many Facebook groups that I've created. Most of them were created out of a struggle. Like I said, the um, RCR was because I'm trying to pass the CR. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. So <laughs> there, there was one time I was in this one Facebook group and I posted some, a comment. It was like Christian comment, some kind of encouraging thing. And one of the people in the group said, that has no place in this group. We're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started a group on Facebook called Christian Court Reporters and Friends, you know, and so instead of turning it into anger or frustration, I just create. And so I have groups on Facebook. One is called um, Real Team Court Reporters, Court Reporter Needed Today, or Court Reporter Needed, Court Reporter Available, Scope is Needed Today, Proof Reader Needed Today. Uh, student court reporter connection. I don't know. There's probably like 10 or more groups, but they all were created out of one of those moments like, what did you just say? Or, <laughs> <you know? laughs> and just, just to help, help others. And I, I, I've had such a hard time at times finding a good Scopus or a good proofreader. So that's why I created the, the Scopus Needed Today group and proofreader Needed Today, you know, those kind of things. So what's next for me? just to continue learning and growing and helping others and um, doing the best job I can do while I'm here. There's a phrase I'd like everybody to remember when I went through a hard challenging time uh, at one point in the courthouse, one court system I was in, 
And um, the Lord just spoke to me and said, don't get mad. Just demonstrate professional competence. That's what you do. Demonstrate professional competence. And so, you know, that's what I want to encourage you all to do. That's what I want to continue to do. And, um, you know, just let the Lord use me as he will. And even over here in Puerto Rico, I've met people. I see my mission, why the Lord has me here. Aside from serving as a court reporter, I've been able to um, learn from people and, and help certain people. So that's what I plan on continuing to do. You have definitely dropped some knowledge that I want to um, keep in mind, demonstrating professional competency. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on this pandemic, will you attend the national convention in Vegas? Uh, well, depending on the pandemic and depending on the finances, <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, we eat, no matter how much money you might have or not have, you have a budget and you have to consider everything. So um, I, I might, I just might. I don't know when it is. I, it's usually in August, right? Yes, yes. I think like the second week in August. Mm -hmm. So, oh, the conventions are valuable. I mean, you meet so many nice people and learn so much. So it might happen depending on the pandemic. I've never <laughs> been to Vegas. No. Uh, no, <laughs> never been to <laughs> Vegas. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't gamble, but I would eat and I would yes. probably. <laughs> probably <laughs> I'm a foodie, so I'll be right there with you. <laughs> right, right. And probably watch some of the shows or I'm sure I'd find some fun stuff to do. So that, that's a possibility. So are there any closing remarks that you would like to say the, to, about this profession or to new professionals or just in general? Well, um, just in general, as we close again, thank you so much for having me. And, um, you know, I thank Shawnice and just all of you who are listening. Thank you so much. Be encouraged. Know that you can do it. Keep dreaming. Reach for your goal. If you keep practicing, you'll get there. You'll pass those tests. Don't give up. Um, if I and others can do it, you can do it too. Go ahead and get certified through NCRA and uh, USCRA, that's the United States Court Reporters Association. They give their real-time exam. Also, they have a yearly convention as well. You can uh, take that test even if, you're, if you, even if you don't work for federal courts, you can still become a member and take their exams. Um, also, I encourage you to take my exam, the new exam I created, the RCR. So yes, get certified, you know, get those certifications. And um, I didn't mention, I also have a bachelor's degree in community ministry from Geneva College in Beaver Falls, PA. Worked hard on that. So get your higher degrees, even though you're in court reporting, um, pace yourselves. Now, I don't want you to burn yourselves out, but at the right time in the right season, um, you can slowly work at it, get your bachelor's degree, master's, Law, I, I know court reporters who have gotten their law degrees. Some have become judges. Wow. You know, get your law degree, um, even if it's slow, slowly. So I encourage you to continue your education. Um, you know, like I said, save, invest, learn about the stock market. You can actually download the Cash App app on your phone, and you can invest in the stock market right through Cash App for as little as $5, $10. $50, $100, whatever you pick, all kind of stocks you can pick in there. Um, save, invest um, for your retirement, for your legacy you're going to leave behind to your family. And uh, like I said before, be business minded. Uh, reach out to mentors, ask questions, speak up, use your voice if you work in a situation. Um, you know, just speak up and let your needs be known as well. I developed a speaker participation card I'll tell you guys more about it, but before COVID, you could put it on the conference table or on the council table. It tells them just what you need, how to speak, um, you know, just to let our needs be known. And I developed something that you can put up on your Zoom screen now. And instead of your picture showing on a break or before you start, it tells them what you need um, just in one little glance. I'll tell you guys more about that later. And uh, you know, just be encouraged. Don't give up. You'll have good days, challenging days, and all in between. But 
just look at the whole picture and keep your eye on the goal where you're trying to get to. Keep your eye on Jesus and keep your hand in God's hand and you'll make it. So I just want to wrap up before I do my um, closing remarks. I just enjoyed everything about today. So many topics that were in here, that balance you talked about, representation as a young Black woman being out there and having those who have helped you get through uh, certain doors and help you get, get to where you are and how thankful you are, uh, you know, advocating for us, you know, um, bridging the gaps, how you're trying to do so that way we can become federal where we may not be able to get that um, certification yet creating more opportunities for us, creating our own voice out there, um, especially if you're so young doing it. I, I came along a little later, <laughs> but um, I, I was young when I, it just took me longer to pass the test, but still creating your voice out there to keep striving, um, keep testing, having faith in yourself, having faith with God, having that you'll make it through, you know? Um, and just, this was just an amazing um at time and I'm so glad that we got a chance to speak and get to know each other better <laughs> oh definitely and thank you so much you just blessed my heart you did an awesome job I thank God for you and Shawnee's as well and everybody listening thank you again for taking out the time and I would like to thank everyone that took the time to check this podcast out this podcast was designed for the entire profession expect to hear new content and new episodes for 2021 I would also like to thank all of those um, who tuned in have a great day and let's continue to celebrate our court reporting and captioning week until then stay encouraged <laughs>